the international is coming. The world's best Dota 2 teams fighting for the chance to be forever remembered as the greatest players of all time. Each team and player bringing with them a unique story to share. This is the International Lowdown, and this is the story of Optic Gaming. The Green Wall. Optic Gaming's iconic symbol. The Green Wall is a description for the phenomenon the team has created in the past with their fans from around the world. When watching an esports event with Optic Gaming in it, it's common to look at the chat and see nothing but Optic fans flooding it with their logo and their green flares. A mass of fans whose virtual cheering block out anybody else from entering the conversation. The organization was founded in first-person shooters, which could explain the ferocity of their dedicated fan base, who commonly travel from game to game supporting their brand no matter what genre the game is. The architects of Optic Gaming are some of the greatest mental masons we have in Dota 2. Top thinkers all brought together under one team to show the world a new kind of Dota, one that no other minds could have ever imagined in their wildest fantasies. In this year's Dota 2 Pro Circuit, Optic Gaming slowly improved throughout the year, which is a pretty ordinary path for a pretty new team. However, the speed at which they became competitive at a Tier 1 level was an extraordinary achievement. While hints of brilliance were seen throughout the year, at the end of the Dota Pro Circuit, they sat at ninth place in the rankings, eighth place and above, getting an automatic invite to the International Eight. They would fight desperately for that final spot, playing better than ever and beating the world's best teams at the majors and the minors. But through strokes of bad luck, the team would face off against the number one ranked team in the entire world, Virtus Pro in that one game they needed to qualify for the international. Twice. And they were defeated both times. Undaunted, Optic Gaming entered the regional qualifiers for TI knowing that they were fighting for the spot that they truly deserved. After a year of hard work and dedication, their sacrifices actually paid off. And they have made their way to the international eight. But for many of the players, this will not be their first as players or personalities. After all, three out of the five players on Optic were hired as analysts for last year's International. But the panelists are back to being players. And this year, the panel is gonna need to start talking about them. No stranger to the International, Peter Pan Dam or PPD is a TI veteran and one of the most well-known figures in all of Dota 2. A pro player in MOBAs before Dota 2 even came out, PPD joined the world of Dotes with his friend Zai, the duo playing on a few squads until forming Sad Boys with Arteezy, Universe, and Fear, which became the first successful iteration of the now famous Evil Geniuses. Known as one of the greatest captains in Dota 2's history, Peter's strength lies in his unique drafting abilities. He's hailed the world over for his deep understanding of what it takes to pick the best hero for any situation and what that hero might be, despite how often they're being used in the current meta. Gameplay-wise, PPD is famous for his poverty build for his supports, where he will allocate hardly any resources for himself, but still be able to pull off incredible plays even the most farmed supports would have major issues replicating. PPD's career has taken many paths. He's been a captain, a player, a panelist, and even the CEO of Evil Geniuses itself. And while he's seen just about every facet of esports, he has excelled at every single one he has attempted. While PPD seems to be capable of just about anything, he seems to feel most at home leading a squad of his very own to international glory. With two third place victories under his belt and one TI championship already, PPD is coming to the international once more to be the first player in history with two TI titles. The muscle behind PPD's mind, Zai has been a close friend of Peter for quite some time, but has become an international superstar off of his own merits. A legendary player, Zai won his first event at 14 years old and has been known as one of Dota 2's best supports since 2014. 
Tending to follow his longtime friend PPD, Zai has had several ventures out on his own, with a very successful solo venture to Team Secret in 2015, before returning back to Evil Geniuses and now eventually Optic. Zai is a man of culture and class, leaving Dota at the height of his career to finish his schooling, as he felt that education and learning were just as important as his gaming career. Coming back from this extended leave, Zai didn't seem to lose a beat and continues to be one of the best support and offlane players today in the scene. It's not surprising to see the Mozart of Dota single-handedly hold an entire team at bay when his whole team is dead, or making a game-winning play for his team in nearly every single game. After all, he's been playing that same tune for years now. Another great thinker and Dota 2 legend, Pycat has been setting records since his first major Dota 2 tournament, which, coincidentally, was the first Dota 2 International. Joining TI1 under the team OK Nirvana, PyCat only placed 8th in the tournament, but he had the highest average gold per minute out of every single player, including the players that actually won the event. PyCat was also the first ever player to achieve a rampage in a competitive Dota 2 game. In short, this kid goes way, way back. Despite being one of the oldest Dota 2 players, Pycat still has not faded in skill or his ability to innovate. A talent so widely respected, Team LGD invited him to join their international squad, flew him out to China specifically just for his big old brain. And that was just the beginning. Joining and succeeding in 11 different high-tier Dota 2 teams, Pycat has been noted as being a fiery coach in the game, despite being a relative joker in the public. Well, many people might know PyCat for his hyper-intelligent coaching style or for his hilarious voice impersonations. He is most known in the pro circles for his incredible, near-perfect memory, able to rattle off drafts, hero movements, and lane positions from matches that happened nearly seven years ago. While PyCat has had a very long list of victories, he has yet to claim himself the Aegis, a goal that he hopes to achieve this year at the International Eight. One of the newer players on the squad at CCNC started playing Dota 2 way back in 2012, but he didn't attempt to go pro for several years. Instead, CCNC was known as a high-level pub legend. For years, he stocked the high MMR games until he was known as one of the best in the region, eventually being invited to Team FDL three years later. He would have minor success until he joined Team Freedom in 2017, who were only one game away from qualifying for last year's International. Invited last year as talent instead of being a player, the world at large was introduced for the first time to Quinn, who took the fame a little differently than most people. You see, when players get notoriety, they tend to change. They hold themselves up to a higher regard and develop a bit of holier-than-thou attitude. But not Quinn, no. Quinn still stalks Twitch chat spamming meme garbage as much as possible. Quinn still responds to Reddit comments and he tweets uh, ridiculous things at people because Quinn is still the same old goofy kid that refused to go pro and wanted to just slam people in pub games for three years. CCNC stands for cool, calm, and collected. And while, yeah, this might have been a little ironic early in his career, Quinn has developed himself into a mature role model in the last year, who has put his mind to his plays rather than his trash talk, much to the benefit of Team Optic. Now, imagine for a moment that you bring the greatest minds in the world together and you tell them to make a weaponized monster. A monster whose immense physical power could be directed by their incredible brains to make the ultimate fighter. 33, he's Optic Gaming's Frankenstein. 33 has shown incredible abilities in his games for many years now. Joining Dota 2 in 2015, being on several teams Dota 2 fans will recognize, such as Kai P and Planet Dog. His run on Planet Dog was most notable as he played a phenomenal carry Tidehunter against the Greeks of Mouse Sports, earning him the last spot and single-handedly getting them invited to the International. His Tidehunter plays are still remembered to this very day. But despite all this incredible gameplay, 33 just couldn't seem to win anything significant for a very long time. 
He was incredibly talented, don't get me wrong, but his boundless power seemed to have very little direction. Until he was noticed by PPD and brought into Optic, with four of the greatest minds in Dota 2's history helping him finally channel his power, 33 has become their star player, and even rivals Zai with his ability to make huge, game-changing plays. With some unbelievable performances at both ESL Birmingham and the Super Major, 33 has led Optic to unprecedented victories over the greatest teams in Dota except for VP. While he has attended the International before, making it last year with Team Hellraisers, who used to be Planet Dog, he is a whole new animal on Team Optic, and the team is ready to unleash their beast upon TI-8. So, there is your little peek behind the green wall, a phenomenon which has taken over many esports games in the past, and is now making their mark on Dota 2, on the international stage. Their minds now set on only one goal, and their monster finally off of his leash, Team Optic is ready to build the wall in Vancouver. The only question remains, will you be part of it at the International 8?